Welcome to New Hope Underground. Hang on, because 2021 is right around the corner. Today's episode is entitled, Monolith Mania, and Kurt What's His Name. And now here are your hosts, Darren and Drew Hansen. So, I don't think I've ever heard the term Lush used when speaking in a you know, sound check. Yeah. I but fit. you just said my voice was lush. Yeah, it's a nice lush voice. Is that an, is that like a technical sound term? No. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know technical sound terms. I just I just know if it's vibing or not. Well, I'm glad that ever since you became part of this podcast. I mean, it's been nice to have you around because you're so smart with the you know. Well, I don't have I, to worry about all the stuff I was doing. Well, I can uh, smart with the tech stuff. I can push some buttons. And hey, if the red button's on, we're good. Hey, pushing buttons. It's, you know, that's all we need to do. Now you edit everything. Some people are like, hey, keep those guys away from those buttons. You know, maybe we're going to have all these podcasts week after week. Lucas says, hey, stay away from those buttons all the time to me. (laughs) That's why I'm never in the booth. So we have to talk about this. I mean, it is the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. I go up at, I think it was second service this last Sunday. No, uh, let's not I, talk about I that. I go up to to introduce communion <laughs> at a very somber time. And mm. so, and then there was this like loud, bam! Gosh! I mean like loud on the stage. I don't want to talk about it. I didn't turn around because I thought like, I don't want to embarrass anybody. You know, but obviously everybody's kind of looking that direction anyway. Uh, and what happened, Drew? Yeah, I dropped my guitar <laughs> just straight down onto the ground. It was about waist high, and I just dropped it straight down. You know, it's funny because it didn't make any guitar sounds or anything. It just oh, it was an electric guitar. It was it was it was turned it, down. Yeah, it was muted, and so it was just bam, it, like real loud. On yeah, this. any any noise that that you heard was just straight guitar up against the the floor. It shook me because I mean I was like it was right behind me, so I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I think most people would be freaking out about their guitar, but it, I was not. I was more just concerned about the you know five hundred people staring at me, <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out what was going on. It was good though. It went, it, you know, I said, "Well, I about had a heart attack," and then we uh, went into communion. <laughs> yeah, you played it off pretty well. You didn't even <laughs> turn around. I kept looking at you to turn around, but you just like kept going. I'm like, man, he's a pro. Yeah. Yeah, okay. when that happened, when I dropped the guitar, it was complete. The only time in the service when there was complete silence between the video and between you talking, <laughs> the keys player hadn't even the only started. Time pe- there's silence. The, the keys player happens. hadn't even started playing yet, so there's nothing going on. Hey, welcome Bam. to New Hope Underground. We're the professionals. We are the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> professionals at what we do not know, but the, uh, we'll find pros. our niche somewhere somehow. But hey, welcome. I'm Darren. And I am Drew. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff today. We've got a really great show. We're going to got a story for you from the news, of course, today. We've got, uh, we're going to do Christmas gifts again, part two, mm-hmm. part two. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to actually have an interview with uh, uh, one of our kids here at the church, Molly Ogle. So we're nice. talking to her. And then we're also going to have uh, some fun stuff at the end that you can even win a prize today. If you listen there all the way you through, go. you gotta listen all the way through. Don't be skipping. I was gonna say you can just skip. No, to like skip the last to the end. <laughs> do right. you have? We don't have uh, timestamps in the show notes, do we? No, we don't. Okay, no, no, that's good. They yeah, just have we, to listen. We don't do that. We want you to listen all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, I'm just way too lazy to sit there and worry about timestamps. Yeah, yeah. I don't, it's nice on YouTube, but on our podcast, no, you just go with it. So yeah. it's time for the news. It's time for the news. You already you already heard a story that was personally embarrassing. Let's let's scope out and see what's going on in the country. That's right. Yeah. Or even around the world. Oh, around the world. Because we're, oh. we're, we're global. It's, I, it's it is it is around the country, but it's also around the world. This particular story. I don't know. Maybe you've seen this. It has escaped my attention until now, and I don't know how it escaped my attention. What is it? But apparently, there have been some mysterious monoliths. Showing up oh, all you didn't over know the about globe. This? I had no idea. Oh. And there's a new one that has shown up uh, next to an El Paso shopping mall. Oh, in El in Paso. Texas. Now these mono. It, it, now let's explain what a monolith is. Mm-hmm. Okay, monolith is like it's kind of like a um, sculpture. It looks what it looks like. It mm-hmm. looks like a sculpture anyway. And it's it's kind of like a square that 
that just goes straight straight up and yeah, down. Yeah, rectangle like maybe. A re- rectangle. There you go. Uh-huh. Rectangular sculpture. A vertical square. <laughs> vertical square. A square that you just. I don't know. In my it's head, a, I'm thinking it's a square stru- on the ground. You just take it straight up. Yeah, it's a structure of some kind. It's like a metal structure that looks like it was handmade. And it's got four sides. Mm-hmm. And uh, that all. That's all it is. It looks like a pillar. Mm-hmm. A four-sided pillar. There we go. There's the word. There's the word. And it and also is metallic. Yeah. The ones that are showing up. Mm-hmm. So apparently this is not the first monolith. No. I've seen a f- couple. Well, not me personally, but I've heard read about a couple. Well, the first one that we that I was reading, I was kind of reading backwards on it. And apparently one showed up in a uh, kind of a, a, re, a remote cavern in Utah. Mm-hmm. And it, people don't know how it just showed up and they don't know. It disappeared one day and they don't know how it disappeared either. Yeah, there's no evidence of any uh, machinery down there. And it, it's, this thing is too big for like some people to carry. Yeah, it's good size, but, it's, but it looks like a sculpture you would find in a park or something. I mean, it's not huge. At least some of the ones that I've seen. It seemed like it'd be too heavy though. Yeah, I, apparently it's made of plywood, they said, and... Oh, you know, it's got, okay. So they know what it's made of. But and the reason they know this is because there's been others that have popped up. One popped up in on a hillside in, next to some woods in northern Romania. Mm-hmm. And now the one in El Paso. There's also one that was that popped up on the street in front of a candy store in Pittsburgh. Man, this is like some real Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy stuff. And the, the name of the candy store, by the way, is Grandpa Joe's candy store in Pittsburgh and the reason I bring that up is because Grandpa Joe's and the people who run Grandpa Joe's said that because of COVID they've had a really hard time just like any other business sure but when the monolith showed up their uh, sales have gone up huh. and their online sales have gone up and so I, st- huh. I, I of course I went to go look at Grandpa Joe's candy online and I'm I'm gonna buy some so there so you go so you don't question the origins of all these <laughs> Subsequent, of course monoliths. I do because I thought this is really interesting. Somebody's traveling around the country putting up monoliths. They think it's kind of now the people, of course, are making an alien case out of it. Uh, but now I'm starting to think that it's more than one person here. Oh yeah, somebody uh, could it be that somebody from I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm a conspiracy guy here a little bit. Could it be that somebody from Grandpa Joe's candy store put it up there and go, hey, look, we have a monolith. I don't think that's a conspiracy. I think that's just deductive reasoning. (laughs) (laughs) Because if you keep reading through the article and you you talk about how their online sales have been going way up. Yeah. You're just like, because of this monolith, because people are are reading about it everywhere. I was going to say, I didn't know a candy store existed since like 19th century London. I know. It's really cool. It's really (laughs) cool, though. I I am going to order something. So it worked for me. That's cool. So yeah. I don't care if they did it or not. I just think it's a, and if you, they did, I'd just chalk it up as a genius move because it's a great idea. Can you bring some Grandpa Joe's candy to the show next time? Sure. I'll, cool. I'll, as, soon as, I, as soon as I get it, what I'll, are you going to get? Turtles? I don't know yet. I'm, I, there's so much on there. It's crazy. Do they make their own chocolate? Um, I don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. I haven't had a chance to even scour the some site. Artisan chocolate. They sell good. stuff you can buy for Christmas too. They sell all sorts of stuff. Anyway, so Grandpa Joe's candy store in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, right there on the street, there's this monolith. People are stopping, taking pictures, taking selfies with it. Now, so it's turned into that, a touristy that, thing. That's what's happened in El Paso mm-hmm. with now uh, as well, next to a shopping mall. Gotcha. So I don't, it just seems, here's the thing. A couple of things that went through my head as I'm reading this. Hmm. One is if you want to, if you want people to think it's aliens, then the Utah thing makes sense. Yeah. And Romanian one. Romania kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. But El Paso Shopping Mall, Grandpa Joe's Candies, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Of course, they are pretty random, you know, so. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This monolith randomly appeared in front of my Italian restaurant that's failing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody check it out. This is a Call suburb of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I think, hey, you got to get the upper hand any way you can. Yeah. It's and just... if it means building a little bit of a monolith in front of your store, then that looks just like this Suppose of alien one out in Utah. Yeah, space, space themed entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. I will say that it, it kind of it raised my it raised my interest when I saw something about how the one in Utah disappeared, and how people can't explain it. But mm-hmm. then I found news articles of video of four guys taking it. Four guys. Oh man! See, I heard originally that it was like 
un- unexplainable. Like it was, there was no way. <laughs> it was because it, it, it was. It well, was see, in, to me, it was in a like like a part of this part of the park that was like right. closed off. Right. You weren't allowed to get to it because of preservation. But you know what? Four guys showing video, four guys taking it away, away mm-hmm. doesn't prove anything, though. Really, it's like a men in black situation. It could they could have just. You no, know, what I mean is, it could have shown up on its own. I'd aliens like to, could have put it there, but then four guys took it. I'd like to think that the aliens live among us, and they're dressed like Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have another Alien Day. New Hope yeah, Underground. We I had missed one that of, one. I wasn't around for that. Was it last fall, mm-hmm. uh, 2019? I have the stickers. 18? Gosh, things go by so fast. It was 2018. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago, we have we we had an Alien Day. Gave out burgers, and it was great. And this is when they were gonna charge Area 51. Hey, if all the people were if uh, COVID thing yeah. calms down and the monoliths are still going on, we should have our our own monolith monolith day. Like a not like a day, but like a ceremony where we we put out <laughs> our own like rid, uh, ribbon cutting ceremony for a monolith. You know, if New Hope was smart, we would just put a monolith out front and say, "Hey, check this out." Yeah, what we found. They did that. They put it on top of the building, though. Yeah, steeple. <laughs> it's, it's kind a, of it's, it's kind of like steeple. a Christian monolith. Yeah, it's not metallic. We need to make it metallic. Anyway, hey, that's the news. So there you go. Mysterious monoliths. Isn't that good to know? Man, that's it's it's putting my whole life into perspective. Do you want perspective? Stay with us. <laughs> So it's December, Drew. Christmas right around the corner. Day song. I think we're recording this on what the fifteenth. So we are. Yep. We're getting close to Christmas Day. It's my last day of finals today, so I'm feeling good. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm feeling good. And you you nailed the French final. Yeah. 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 How See, do you, how do you say that in French? I nailed the French final. Uh, I don't think nailed like translate, but uh, okay. C'était facile pour moi. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Good job. Mm-hmm. Thank you. What do you, what, how would you say very good? Uh, très bien. Très bien, yeah. yeah. I, I don't say it with the accent very well, but you know. Yeah, you got to have the accent, man. That's what makes it sexy. That's what makes it, you know, sound awesome. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we anyway, last episode we talked about some Christmas gift ideas that were a little bit unique. There were some good ones. There were some good ones out there. And there were so many good ones. I, I want to do a part two. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to throw these out at you and see what you think. You know, these and these these are gift ideas. You can, I mean, these are things you can get. I mean, it's not like I'm just making stuff up here. You can, I mean, you can you can find them. Yeah, you, you spend can, hours you trolling the internet, like trying to figure. That's right. Out, I just troll the internet. That's all I do. Trying to figure out what the best gifts are for you. Holiday so, guide from the New Hope Underground. Here's one that I think is is great. Part one of the holiday guide. Uh, part two. Part two. Of, part one of part two of Christmas presents and the holiday guide for from New Hope Underground. Here we go. You can buy a floor mat. Now, you can buy personalized floor mats uh-huh. anywhere. But there's one that you can buy that actually says on the floor mat, bye-bye, buddy. And then in smaller font, I hope you find your dad. <laughs> I now, hope it comes you find from, your dad. It comes from Elf, yeah. But I just thought... How funny, especially with someone who has no idea that that's a quote from a movie as you're leaving. <laughs> Bye-bye, buddy. I hope you find your dad. Yeah, like like your grandparents or something. Like, <laughs> who are you talking to? What a great floor mat. <laughs> no, that's okay. good. Okay, how about this? You, you can also, you can personalize just about anything nowadays, including phone cases. Mm-hmm. The one phone case I saw, which is awesome, was called Taco Cats in Space. I'm in. That's all you need to know. I'm, I'm in. Next. It's basically, a ki- <laughs> it's basically kittens inside of taco shells looking like they're flying through space. Man, what what has meme culture turned us into? Is that what it is? It's a meme. No, I don't know. Sure, it, I, I bet just, you it is. I just feel like that's something that I'm, I feel like that's got to be a meme somewhere. But but what, I mean, how many how many people can say, hey, I've got a taco, ta- taco cat in space? Uh, phone case. Phone case. Yeah, I mean, how, nobody. Can yeah, see I don't it. think those words have ever been put together in the history of the human language. <laughs> now, another thing I found was you. This is a great stocking stuffer uh, if you need one. Are, are candy canes? Now, candy canes. Everybody puts in stocking stuffers. Mm-hmm. But have you ever had pickle flavored candy canes? No, I was I was okay with the last gift. This one, I'm totally out. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Of course, these candy canes are green and white. You know, they're not red. 
but oh, they're good. pickle flavored. That, I, I, it sounds really disgusting. I'm not concerned but, about know. the color, man. What's pickles? It? Yeah. No way. I mean, let's just say you know someone who just loves pickles. I mean, I guess that's the way to go. Oh, well, they're freaks. I know. I, I believe so, too. Sure, I sure don't put them on my burgers, that's for sure. No way. Another thing I thought was really cool was, uh, f- which I I don't even know these are still available, like people buy these, hmm. is a doorstop. Okay. But it's but it's a fluffy llama. Yeah, I think looks, I've seen something like that. Looks like a llama that just is lying down on the floor there, and uh-huh. uh, it's a doorstop. And it's pretty big. I mean, hold your door. So you you if you wanted to buy one, you just have to Google doorstop. Fluffy llama doorstop. Okay. But Google that. Yeah. You can also buy a tortilla baby wrap, which is uh, like a, you know, what you wrap your, like swaddling clothes, you wrap your baby in, but it looks like okay. a tortilla. Okay. So your baby then ends up looking like a burrito. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So why not, you know, go for that? Yeah. I mean. Maybe you can have a pickle flavored candy cane and a baby burrito. These are all weird. They're very weird. <laughs> How about how about this? Now, last time you you got you thought the, you thought the uh, monthly subscription to jerky was a good idea. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's how about this? A monthly subscription to cacti. Mm. You get a different cactus in the mail every month. Okay. See, I might be into this because Brooke wants some more greenery in the house, but she keeps <laughs> killing it. <laughs> like she's real bad. She has like four books on how to take care of plants. Meanwhile, there's like four plants that are dead. <laughs> And and she's better at reading the books and taking care of the yeah. And I used to work in a Mexican restaurant, and they used to make cactus for us all the time. Like we'd eat it. They really yeah, it's delicious. Wow. Yeah. So maybe you could go cactus of the month club uh-huh. and keep some out and some you can eat. Yep. You know, it depends on yeah. We both win. Kind of cactus. We both is. win. It's a good gift for hey, us. Hey, there you go. I, I wish I would have known that. Yeah. I already got your gift. Okay. Here's the here's the last one. Now we did a lot of like selfie ones last time. Mm-hmm. We had the old selfie. I don't know what was it. Book. Uh, it's a photo book. Photo album. Selfie photo album. Here's a selfie toaster. You can actually make toast imprints oh. of your face on toast. Oh my gosh! Now, I, I saw one before that was like this that made the Virgin Mary imprints on toast <laughs> <laughs> to get people excited about possibly her face and bread, and so people might think it's. Some sort of special divine right. intervention. For our Catholic friends out there. But you can just do your own face now. Uh, customize it. Yeah. Cust- That's, I don't know what's what, what would be more terrifying. So just look up selfie toaster and there you go. The last thing I want to see is a picture of your face on my toast first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't understand. <laughs> see, that, that would be the best gift to get a toaster with your face and you give it to someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be a, the best gift ever. Everyone should just give a toaster, like, with your face. Not their face. Your face. Darren's face. That's right. My face. Everyone should have a toaster even with if my they face. Don't, even if they don't know Darren, my dad. Exactly. Who is that guy? I don't know. It doesn't matter. He's on the toast. I don't know. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of spit him back to you, and you tell me which one, if you had to buy one. Okay. You know, you got your floor mat that says, bye-bye, buddy. I hope you find your dad. You got the Taco Cats in Space phone case. Mm-hmm. You got the pickle flavored candy nope. canes. Nope. Hard pass. The Fluffy Llama doorstop. Okay. The Tortilla Baby Wrap. And the monthly cactus subscription. And of course, Selfie Toaster. Hmm. So let's say you had to buy a present just for a friend in general. Okay. You would pick. Um, I would pick the Llama doorstop. There you go. Mm-hmm. The Llama doorstop. For mm-hmm. what reason? Um, mainly because that would be adorable. <laughs> you, just, you just want to go to your friend's house and see this llama doorstop in yeah. action. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want them to have to experience the the candy cane pickle thing. Yeah, the the taco in space with cats or whatever that seems a bit far out. <laughs> uh, yeah, the other ones are okay, but I I think I like the llama one. Fantastic. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, you have an opportunity to make Christmas in 2020 something special. All you have to do is just buy one of those gifts we've been talking about last week or this week. Any of those unique Christmas gifts for someone, and it could be a fun-filled Christmas. Hey, 
Hey, New Hope Underground has been doing interviews with people in our church, and today we have a special someone, Molly Ogle. Hey, Molly, what's up? Uh, nothing really. How are you? I'm good. Fantastic. Now, Molly, tell us a little bit about yourself. How old are you? I'm 11. You're 11. What grade are you in? Sixth grade. And where, where do you go to school? Uh, Stu Strauss. Stu Strauss. Stewart's in Strasburg. Go mm-hmm. Comets. Not Comets anymore, though, is it? Um, well, the, the middle school and the elementary are Comets, and then the high school is Hatchets. Gotcha. Yeah, because they kind of, the high school shares a sports team with another town. Windsor. Gotcha. So you guys are still the Comets. That's good. Mm-hmm. Still got some Comets there at Stewart's in Strasburg. Now, you live out in the country, don't you? Mm-hmm. And you got some animals? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of animals do you have out there? Um, well, we have cows, we have a donkey, we have a rabbit, we have cats, dogs, uh, I have a hamster, and we used to have pigs. We're getting, I think we're going to get some new ones this year. Wow. New pigs. Yeah. And goats. Yeah. You don't want any old pigs laying around. <laughs> no. You got some new ones. So you got some goats mm-hmm. and you got, you, said, you told me you had five goats. Mm-hmm. And you told me some of their names. I want everybody to hear these names. These are awesome. You got five <laughs> names for goats. Go ahead. Okay, so we have one boy, and his name is Earl. And then we have four girls, and their names are Coco, Licorice, Caramel, and Coco. Wow. So they're all like sweet candy stuff, except for Earl. Yeah. <laughs> so how come Earl doesn't have like one of those sweet names? Because um, he's, he's a guy? You got to give the girls the sweet names? Oh, yeah. We kind of got him before all the others. And <laughs> my sister, my oldest sister comes up with the weirdest names. That she I got gotcha. you. <laughs> now, did you give the uh, girl goats the names? Um. Well, Coco is my cousin's goat, so she got to name her. Okay. And then I named Caramel and Licorice and Oreo. So it's kind of a family affair. Yeah. All sorts of people involved with these goats. Well, it's, so we have, there's four grandkids basically. Okay. So each of us have one. I gotcha. And and Earl stands out uh, yeah, in a Earl. way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what kind of sound does Earl make? Um, He makes, like he doesn't really make a noise unless he's scared. He just kind of grunts. He just grunts. Yeah. <laughs> Earl the Grunting Goat. Mm-hmm. Wow, there's a, there's a TV sitcom there somewhere. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, so I love your donkey, though. He's pretty cool. Yeah. You, you get to hang out with him much? Um, Not really. He kind of, like, he won't come up to us. Yeah. He, He's scared of you? Yeah. Okay, well, I understand. <laughs> so uh, you, uh, what do you like about school, for instance? Um, that Anything? I, like I get to see my friends again, okay. online school, you just got to see their faces like So you guys screen. are back at school now. Yeah. It's no online stuff. Yep. Well, that's good. So you, you actually get to hang out with people. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite subject? If you had to pick a subject. Um, probably reading. Okay. Reading. Mm-hmm. Good. So what do you do for hobbies? What do you like doing? Um, I play softball and I show animals. <laughs> okay. You show animals. Mm-hmm. What in the world does that mean? Um, so it's like where, like, show. I mainly show cows, but to who? Like, just your neighbors? Hey, hey, look! <laughs> here's a cow. <laughs> no. So um, there's a bunch of people that like will take cows and you hold them in a barn for a while until the shows start happening. And you so hold there's a bunch of cows in a barn. Well, you like tie them up in a barn, kind what of. What kind of shows are we talking about? You got my interest up. Like it's like a <laughs> three ring circus. They go around and do tricks or no, it's so they do song and dance. What kind of shows are we talking about? There's like a bunch of judges, and then there's like a bunch of cows, and then um, there's certain. Oh, cows. it's like those dog shows. So you like <laughs> you like take them around on a leash, and the, the judges look at them. Yeah. So you oh. just go in like a circle, and then you'll go to one place, and you'll like set up their legs in a certain way, and then you'll scratch their brisket, and then you'll start going again. Oh, excuse and then me, you... I'm not sure we can say that on the air. Oh. Scratch their brisket. Well, it's like their chest part. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then um, you'll start going in a circle again, and then you'll um, set them up again, and then you'll go out of the ring. Well, you won't go out of the ring, and then they'll uh, tell you your rankings, and then oh, you'll so get... do you like win prizes for these shows? Sometimes you'll win like money. Have you won anything? Um, I've won some ribbons wow. and some money. Wow. And my older sister gets like should we have she has some trophies. At wow. my grandma's house. So you guys, sh- and this is, these are just cows. Mm-hmm. You show other animals. So um, Earl doesn't get like a show. No, we don't really show our goats. Our goats for are just for entertainment. 
Man, I bet Earl's really disappointed about that. <laughs> we also show our pigs. Your scoots are just for entertainment. That's that's hilarious. So, like, you get up in the morning. Instead of turning on the TV, you're just like, hey, let's go watch the goats. <laughs> What's Earl doing this morning? We um. So, I like to feed him oranges, too. Okay, the goats? So, yeah. Okay. They like to eat. Well, not out of my hand. So, it's entertaining but... to watch. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, you got show cows. Where do these show cows stay? Um, at my house. Some at my house. In your and then, house? No. <laughs> so isn't that murder? Like, do they jump on your bed? I think that would be <laughs> terrible at night. No. Well, I have gotten stepped on before. Really? That hurts. Really well, I would bad. imagine if a cow's in your house, you're going to get stepped on. Well, they sleep outside. Oh, oh okay. They're and, outside. Yeah, they have pens outside. And my, some of them are at my house. And some of them we, like, rent places at like our neighbor's houses sometimes you ever take your cows for a walk children. uh sometimes yeah really mm-hmm. do, you have we like, walk them, do they have so. like cow parks where you can go and hang out other cows <laughs> we have to like sometimes we have to put them on their halter which is what their leash is called basically we put them on their halter and we just walk them to the other side of the road where we have other pins over there what? at my grandpa's house I'll tell you what you got some interesting hobbies <laughs> yeah i'm not so sure there are a lot of kids your age that are you know doing show cows well, there's uh-huh. actually, there's most of my class shows cows. Most of your um, class shows cows? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When I was a kid, we just like played baseball and stuff. Oh, yeah. In the most backyard. Of, yeah, most of the boys I, didn't, in my I don't class remember anybody showing any cows. <laughs> At least I don't remember. I, I think I would remember cows you yeah. know, being showed. Anyway, um, so are you married? Nope. Okay, how old are you again? <laughs> Eleven. Okay, so you got a few years, I guess. <laughs> a few. <laughs> uh, anybody? I don't know. Any any guy out there that's you know you got your eye on? Not really. Yeah, you're not going to tell me if you did, <laughs> would you? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just curious. Like, so when do you want to get married someday? Yes. Like so way off in the future. Yeah. Like, how old do you think you'll be when you get married? Um, probably like twenty five. Yeah pretty way up there yeah 25 that's when your car insurance goes down <laughs> so it's important you know you can't get married until you can actually afford it yeah and you're not paying the car insurance it's not as expensive <laughs> yeah good, yeah maybe save some for the wedding there mm-hmm. okay that's a good idea so uh if you could live anywhere in the world where would you live um i so when i got when i get older i was thinking of moving to a different state okay. but it was just because um there was one sp- pet that i wanted really bad that you can't have in illinois what what's that it's a monkey oh you're kidding me (laughs) no there's actually people that have pet monkeys and they're really cute now see so we're gonna have to take into account the person that you marry is gonna have to like monkeys (laughs) yeah right or want a monkey yeah and so what state do you have to live in to have a monkey um probably I'm not sure. I just know that that's not allowed in Illinois. I bet so. you could go to Idaho because there's not much out there. <laughs> they don't really care if monkeys are running around. They could probably, you know, charge taxes or something for some monkeys. So they probably are okay with it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Anywhere else you think? Um, probably. I thought like moving to like Alabama or Alabama. Texas. Yeah. yeah. Southern monkeys. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. I mean, you get. I'm glad you're planning and got mm-hmm. your life you know, looking forward ahead of things. Okay. Well, I've got a couple other questions for you. Ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me find another question at you, Molly. You ready? Mm-hmm. What do you want to do when you grow up? Um, like job wise? Yeah. Job or. Um, I wanted to be a veterinarian. That does not surprise me for some <laughs> reason. Now, do you have a specialty with veterinary? I mean, just like you want to do the show cow thing or you want to do the exotic thing, like the monkey thing? What, what are you thinking? Um, I wanted to be like a like an all animal vet kind of. All animals. Yeah. Awesome. Would you like to be on uh, TV and have your own show like with animals and stuff and tell people about them? Yeah. That'd be pretty would, cool. Yeah. It's kind of like the crocodile hunter or something like that. Yeah. Would you wrestle a crocodile if you had the chance? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. Do you like any sort of dangerous animals at all? Um, I find like tigers. They're kind of, like tigers and lions are pretty, and so are bears. I like bears. Wow. We could have a new show called the Tiger Queen. <laughs> and it could be you. You could take over for that Tiger King guy. <laughs> so you really? I mean, have you ever been around a tiger? 
Nope. No, you well, just, I've seen you want to. You've seen, seen him at the, the zoo. zoo. Yeah, but that's not about. You didn't have the guts to like jump the fence or anything. I and well, not ju- guts. Nope. I meant stupidity. Nope. You didn't have the stupidity <laughs> nope. to jump the fence or anything. What about like uh, other exotic animals? You like snakes and reptiles and stuff like um, that? Um, I snakes are okay. I guess I like as a child. I loved them. I would like if I find one in my yard, I just run up and pick it up. Are you from the serious? Tail. I would run and scream like a little girl. (laughs) But you would just pick it up. Yeah, I still have pictures from when I was like seven of me holding snakes just by the tail. Oh my gosh, you're a brave little girl. (laughs) Now, so so tigers and snakes and bears and oh my, I mean, just all sorts of things. So uh, uh, let's say that you you grow up, Mm -hmm. uh, let's say that happens, and let's say that you become a veterinarian. Mm-hmm. And you live in Alabama with a few monkeys around <laughs> and you get a TV show of your own. Mm-hmm. All right. And you get lots of money because you're becoming very famous. Okay? Yeah. What would be the first thing you would buy if you had like lots of money? Um, probably. Um, probably like, like a new house. A new house. Yeah. Yeah. Now the house has to be able to have lots of places for animals. Yes. You know. Yeah, because yeah, I also you got want cows like, running through the house and <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, I also want like those small animal types, like hamsters and hedgehogs. And I've had my eye on a hedgehog. What exactly is a hedgehog? All, all I knew is I <laughs> thought it was uh, one of those video game guys. What exactly That's is Sonic, it? That's Sonic. That's Sonic. Okay. <laughs> hedgehogs don't look like Sonic. I promise you, they're not blue. They're not but, blue. <laughs> no, okay. that's they're, good to know. <laughs> they kind of look. So like, I'm not going to be like hanging out in a field and see this blue hedgehog <laughs> run by. No. It's just probably not going to happen. Okay. No. So it's like a little rat, kind of, but it's like a fat rat that has a bunch of like kind of looks like tiny twigs sticking yeah. out of its back that are kind of pointy. I think you just described some members of my family. <laughs> No, I, I understand. So that's, yeah, a hedgehog. Interesting. So you, you just like all sorts of, I mean, every animal, you don't really care. Yep. Yeah. What about birds? You like birds? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So flamingos be hanging out at your house? and Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I really am hoping that all these things happen to you because I want to come visit you. Okay. <laughs> and hang out with all that. Okay. I think that'd be really, really cool. Okay. Uh, one more question. You ready? Okay. What do you, uh, I, how long have you been coming to church here? Um, probably since I was like one or two, I think. So pretty much your whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you like about it the most? Um, I like that like all the kids are really nice and, um, that just everything mostly. I really like this church. Fantastic. Well, we're glad you're here. Now, last, very last question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have like a favorite Bible story at all? Any, any Bible stories stick out to you? It's like, wow. Um, I kind of like um, Mark. That's one of my favorites. The book of Mark? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there there a story in there you can think of that's like, oh, that was cool? Something Jesus did? Not really. It's just all of it. All of it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus and and the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So uh, thanks for joining me on this interview. Thanks for having me. Oh, you bet. We'll have you back, too, sometime. And I... (laughs) What we probably ought to do is start a new feature up and bring some live animals in here and have you <laughs> have you describe them. Okay. Which is maybe not the best for podcast, <laughs> but I don't know. It could be kind of fun. W- would you like that? Yeah. I think we should do it sometime. Start hey, a thanks, YouTube Molly. channel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe we should do that. Yeah. <laughs> throw that throw that up. We could start. Maybe I. Oh boy, you got me thinking now. We have to <laughs> come up with some great ideas. We could call it Molly's Wild Kingdom or something like that. Or <laughs> yeah. Or uh, hedgehogs and Molly or something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. And you go from showing cattle and getting a few ribbons to <laughs> being worldwide, worldwide known as mm-hmm. the girl on YouTube that shows all these animals. <laughs> Who's doing that? Anybody? I don't know. Watch out, Bendy Irwin. Here comes Molly <laughs> Oval. So I got a question for you. All right. Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's it's that obvious for you. Well, it is for me. Okay. I mean, there's like there's like a whole Christmas party scene. All right, is that all it takes? Good enough. It comes Good out enough. of Christmas. It's got Christmas stuff in it. Elements. Okay. Okay. But well, Bruce Willis. I mean, come on. No, that's good. I'm I'm curious what the people think. Uh, it's it's kind of a controversial topic, you know. I know. I don't know how it can be that controversial. 
No, I, mean? I, I don't. I don't always think of it as like the, like a main Christmas movie. What's a, what's your favorite Christmas movie? Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite. Touche. Touche. My favorite Christmas movie. Gosh, um, it pr- probably I, it's just it's, something. It's interesting. Jimmy Stewart? It probably isn't a very long list. I'm not a big Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful person. Life. You like Jimmy Stewart? Yes, but I would I'd say Christmas Vacation. Probably. <laughs> Probably <laughs> two the, completely the classic, opposite movies. The classic, yeah. No, that's a good one. Both that's of those, choice. yeah. So, uh, y- did you already watch it? This you have plans to watch movies for Christmas? Well, your mom does. Mm. You know, she loves all those Hallmark Christmas movies. Mm, no uh, way. She watches Christmas movies in July sometimes. I mean, she doesn't yeah. care. I'm assuming you won't be watching those. No, so, because once you've seen one, you've seen them all. Oh, oh that's obvious. I, yeah. I, I could write one. Hey, I could write a screenplay or, you know, a script for how would it go? a Hallmark Christmas movie. Well, you've got uh, a busy woman who works in the city. She meets a guy who used to be from the country, but now he's living in the city. He's divorced, has a small child, uh-huh. uh, and they meet each other, uh-huh. bumping into each other literally on the street, right. picking up packages, cute meat. this kind of thing. Or meet cute. Just so finds out that she finds out that he runs like this little candy store. Okay. Downtown. Or a bookstore. Or a bookstore uh-huh. or a candle store or, you know, gift shop. All, or, all four. Usually it's a, some sort of gift shop where he actually hand makes everything. Okay, yeah. Out of, out of wood. He sells even one he, thing a month. Even though he's independently wealthy and has made his money from some other uh, right. some other uh, line of work, now he sure. just does woodwork and at his farm just outside the city okay. where he travels back and forth on weekends. Yeah, so. This is good. Well, I mean, this this is Hallmark Christmas Let's, movie. I mean, you can pretty much. <laughs> that's and, that's and at least an hour right a, there. Of course, there's you know there's a lot that goes on. That and it takes a long time for them to finally get together, and uh-huh. they do at a Christmas party on Christmas Eve at her workplace, where she tells everybody at work that she's done with the job, uh-huh. so she can become a mom and wife. Uh huh. And it starts snowing at midnight. And it starts snowing, but she's not really done with the job entirely because. The people there at her workplace love her so much they want her to keep working and they've got an idea for a book thing or something okay. that she can do that so she can still work out in the country and still have her life. And, and she becomes money and insanely and insanely successful with her Christmas book or whatever. Of course. Yeah. Of course, you never get to that. They never show any of that. That's just, you know, so foreshadowing they, they at that point. Because it doesn't matter about what's, the rest What's of the it. name of this one? The one I just did? Uh-huh. It's called... Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's let me give it a good name. How about um, we can we can workshop it. It's okay. Santa's workshop of love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm I'm in. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, no problem. It would uh, it would star Lori Laughlin of before course. the convictions and. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> as grandpa, maybe. You're struggling to speak English. <laughs> All right, so that's mom's. That's your idea. That maybe that's your plan for Christmas. Then is just to write well, a screenplay. I, had a, I was really hoping. Uh, had a Christmas trivia planned. Had a trivia night. Oh right. But we just couldn't pull it off. COVID and other things. Mm-hmm. People just you just couldn't couldn't happen. So I was a little bit disappointed. That's that's one of the things I love to do. I I bought this like trivia package, Christmas questions and stuff. Mm-hmm. So pretty excited about that. But it, oh well, maybe people didn't show up because they knew you dominate. Exactly. <laughs> I was actually going to be the host, so I was actually going to tell, ask the questions. All but, right, here's an idea. We'll flip flop right. it. I can be the host. We can ask you the questions right here, right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. Same questions from that night. Maybe we can salvage some of 2020 for me then. All right, I got a category for you then. Okay, here we um, go. It's movie and TV Santas. All right. All right. So, All right. So yeah, how question many questions? One. There's a few questions. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just tell me when you're done answering. Okay. Uh, Tim Allen plays a mild-mannered man who must assume the role of Santa Claus yes. in what 1994 comedy? Your Great mom movie. was just watching this. The Santa Claus. That's my favorite Christmas movie. And you're right. Santa Claus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the second and third. They were terrible. The Claus, as in C-L-A-U-S. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. What 1947 film starred Edmund Gwynn as a department store Santa who is revealed to be the real Kris Kringle? A Miracle on 34th Street. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yes. Which what? is Natalie Wood was just a little girl on okay. that show. 
I'm I'm struggling to see the answers, but I'm I'm gonna assume that you know them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm struggling to see the answers. <laughs> well, it's just the way this is laid out. Let's see. Um, Tom Hanks played five different characters, including Santa Claus, in what 2004 computer animated film? The Polar Express. Man. He was like an engineer. Yep. I never watched it, but uh, mm-hmm. I know he's on it. Man. Uh, what 2003 film starred Billy Bob Thornton as a mall Santa at Seguero Square Mall in Phoenix? Bad Santa. Yeah. Never watched it again, but I, I remember I remember the uh, re- uh, previews. All right. Okay. And Plus, if you don't see Billy Bob Thornton as Santa Claus too often. So no, that's no. probably his only Christmas role. <laughs> not exactly <laughs> a hallmark. called Bad Santa. He's not exactly a hallmark kind <laughs> yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Actor. Jimmy Stewart kind of character. No. Uh, the role of Santa Claus in the 2006 movie Santa Baby was played by what actor best known for his role as Norm on Cheers? George Went. Man. I wouldn't have known that if you didn't say Norm on Cheers. I know, but I feel like no one's ever heard of that movie. Right, so. yeah. That's, That's good. a great show. Yeah, uh, George Went. Okay, last one. Okay. Who played Santa Claus in the 2018 Netflix film The Christmas Chronicles? Um... Gosh, you know, actually, I've heard this, even though I've never seen it, I, but now I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Do you want any hints? Sure. Uh, he's a very popular actor. Um, believe he kind of blew up in the 80s. Tom Cruise? No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be uh, one short Santa. Will Smith? No. Um. Gosh, the 80s. Wow. You give up on the final one? 2008. I knew you were going to struggle with the new the new movie. Bridges? The Jeff Bridges? No. Good guess. On the right track. Yeah, the new the new stuff, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I was hoping for like, who played Santa Claus in a Twilight Zone episode back in the 60s? I know that one. What's that one? You Art, can't ask your own questions, though. Art Carney. That's, probably, <laughs> I, that's the question I was hoping for. Instead, I get 2018 Netflix. Yeah, that's why I asked it, though. Because I actually knew this one. I don't know. Because they just released the new, like the second one this year. Can you give me another hint? Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. From the eighties. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me pull up his his uh film bio. Uh, let's see. Okay. Hey, now there's so many guys I could say that blew up in the eighties and. Now they're just doing Netflix. I think it's shows. the eighties. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. One of his biggest films is from nineteen eighty six. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, Kirk Douglas. No. I mean, close. His, uh, gosh, not You're Kirk right Douglas. There. You got the first name. I know. I know. I know. Also, is the no, last no, name. No, I know exactly who it is. I can see him. For, you know, and he died not too long ago. Yeah, he? he did. Um, I think. Gosh, Dirty Dancing. No, no, that's Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he also passed away. He was on all. The, he was on all the Disney movies. Yeah, as a kid. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, I can't think of his name for some reason. It's coming. The, Hang on. The last name, I can give you a hint on the last name. He was, he was married to Goldie Hawn. Yeah. And I can't, okay. Most of these things I can't confirm or deny because I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I know what he played. Kurt? I know he, yeah. Um, he was Snake Plissken on <laughs> Escape from New York. <laughs> Our listeners are freaking out right now. They're yelling. Oh my gosh, I know they are. They're like, you know it. Oh my gosh. Now, hang with me, everyone. Hang with me through this podcast. (laughs) I'm going to keep on this until I come up with this name. uh, Oh, for crying out loud. I can give you a hint. I can give you a hint. Snake Plissken. And it won't have anything to do with the character. or the. He's been on so many movies. I can give you a hint that has someone who shares a name. Okay. Uh, Former center in in the NBA. Very oh, famous. Olajuwon? No. Kurt no. Olajuwon. Kurt Olajuwon. That's it. No, that's not it. Kurt, Kurt Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> I can't believe I'm blanking on this. I've Celtics. never... Celtics. Uh, Kurt Parrish. I think he was Celtics. Kurt Garnett. No, they, he never... <laughs> <laughs> oh, His gosh. His first name was Bill. Oh, Kurt Walton? No. Kurt Russell. There you go. Ah. 
<laughs> wow, we struggled to get there. We went all the way through all the Celtic players of old. <laughs> and random, like, Celtic players Kurt from, like, Russell, 2007. Kurt Russell, of course. I'm not sure where my mind went. That's Kurt crazy. Kurt Russell, yeah. Big, big uh, problems in Little China. Well, thanks for doing that. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, Escape from New York. I mean, yeah. That was Kurt, old Kurt Russell. No, yeah, it took us a little, a little while, but we got there. That's right. I don't know why I get him and Patrick Swayze confused. But anyway. The two legends. Exactly. That's right. So, you know what we ought to do is give our listeners a chance to, to get involved. And you can win a $10 Amazon card for your Christmas shopping if you can answer a Christmas trivia question that we Come have. Come on. Another Christmas movie question. Not Santa Claus, mm-hmm. but a Christmas movie question. And all you have to, here's what you got to do. First of all, we know you can look it up. You know, just Google it. Or yeah. Whatever, but we want an honor system. In other words, we want you to only text us or DM us if you know the answer for sure. Don't Google and, Wikipedia. None of that. Right. You can do that if you want, I guess, and get away with it. But we're only going to take the first the first person who DMs us with the correct answer wins. And they get a $10 Amazon card. DM us at New Hope Underground on Instagram or message us on Facebook at New Hope Underground. Here's the question. All right. What was Ralphie's little brother's name on A Christmas Story? The movie. Mm, that's a good question. What was Ralphie's little brother's name on A Christmas Story? They used to show this movie for 24 hours on TBS or something. Do they still do that? Oh, I think so. I don't, know, I don't have cable. Do you know anymore. the name of the actor who played Ralphie on A Christmas Story? Man, I don't remember. Peter Billingsley. Okay. His name, Peter I, 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 know, I know that name. Yeah. Yeah. And then he is, his dad... Uh, was a famous actor as well, who I'm going to forget it, and I totally forgot his name. If 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 our listeners didn't know by now, um, my dad here is <laughs> a trivia whiz. I don't know, not a whiz. It's, I just especially when I it comes enjoy, to old names. I enjoy a lot actors. of trivial stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's yeah. the question one more time? So, what was Ralphie's little brother's name in a Christmas story? Cool. So, yes. Oh, yeah, DM us. Shoot us a DM. $10 Amazon card for the first person who gives us the right answer, the first person to give us the right answer. So also, hey, coming up, uh, well, one thing that's really interesting we need to announce, we said we're going to announce it last time, so here we go. There's something we need to announce about Shelbyville. Drum roll, please. Go ahead. Uh, we have, as a church, officially bought a building. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In Shelbyville, and mm-hmm. it's the old bowling alley. The old bowling alley. So there's a lot of jokes there. Like, we're going to try to save Shelbyville out of the gutter. Uh-huh. Yep. And into Christ's kingdom. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all sorts of jokes we could, you know. Yeah. It's, I hope you don't strike out. It's a real split decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully Jesus will spare us. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's all sorts of <laughs> that jokes. That was a good one. <laughs> all sorts of jokes that can... Uh, a lot that of good dad jokes there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Um, so pin it to your social media. Oh, that's good. Uh, wear some old stinky shoes that have touched other people's feet. <laughs> Wait, that's not on a your pun. first Sunday. Everybody that's has to a get pun. a pair of shoes. <laughs> that's just gross. That's we not we a rent pun. shoes when you come in the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. So that's that's uh, that's good news. Yeah, we're gonna looking at kind of renovating that space um, as financially responsibly as possible, and. You know, bring we're, some life back into that. We're going to do that, it without debt. Building, yeah, we really are. So we're raising the money, and you could be hearing but more, more about it. More so. importantly, it's going to be a place where our people can meet. You know, at one, as COVID starts to die off, or whatever, <laughs> it's it's return to normalcy. We'll have an actual meeting place for our people in Shelbyville. So I think that's awesome. So listen to the updates coming as we go into 2021. And mm. 2021 just can't get here fast enough. We got to put a monolith. We're ready for it. A monolith right in front of the bowling alley. Da-da-da-da-da-da.